This product is legal in California for racing vehicles that shall never be operated upon a public highway. AEM holds no responsibility for any engine damage that results from the misuse of this product. Before we proceed, let's discuss why you'd want to use the FIC's O2 map to alter closed-loop AFRs. For many naturally aspirated vehicles, the factory EC wheel will try to maintain a closed-loop AFR of 14.7 for as long as possible. On these same vehicles that have been converted to force induction, it's possible to start making boost well before the ECU has gone into open-loop operation. An AFR of 14.7 is too lean for any appreciable amount of boost and can lead to poor performance and possible engine damage. Using the FIC's O2 map, we can alter the ECU's desired closed-loop AFR to a more acceptable, richer value. By adding voltage to the O2 sensor circuit, the FIC can alter the ECU's targeted closed-loop AFRs. The FIC essentially makes the ECU think that a richer AFR, like 12 to 1, is now its targeted stoic AFR. And to begin, you need to know how your ECU will react to the different voltages the FIC will apply to the O2 sensor circuit. To do this, we conduct a simple test. The needed equipment for this test is of course the FIC, an external AEM wiggle gauge, and an OBD2 scan tool. Begin by opening the setup system menu. In the O2 section, set the load input to map, set the mode to voltage, and input the bank high and low voltages. Also make sure the view as AFR box is unchecked. Now open the O2 map. All of the cell values should be zero. If they aren't, select all cells, right click, select set value, and enter zero and click OK. Now, with your vehicle parked, running, and fully warmed up, bring the RPMs up to about 2000 RPM. Start inputting small voltages into the entire O2 map. Start at 0.1 or 0.2 volts, and using your AEM wiggle gauge, Read and record the new air fuel ratio. At the same time, use your OBD2 scan tool and read and record the current short term fuel trim. Repeat this procedure and test for different voltages by increasing the cell values globally in small increments such as 0.1 or 0.2 volts. Continue your testing and create a table with 20 breakpoints listing the voltages and the corresponding AFRs and short term fuel trims. In this graphic, you can see the list of voltages, air fuel ratios, and short term fuel trims we found through our testing. We started with 0.2 volts and worked our way up to 4 volts using 0.2 volt increments. We now have a wide range of usable air fuel ratios, and we also know the fuel trims needed to achieve them. The fuel trim information will be used later in this procedure. Now that we have our voltage, air fuel ratio, and fuel trim info, we can build our O2 AFR map. Open the setup system menu and check the view as AFR box. And then click on the map button. Now input the info you found through testing into the table. Make sure the smallest value is put in the first cell and the largest value is in the last cell. Once completed, close the table and open the O2 map. With the O2 map open, you can go through and designate specific air fuel ratios based on load and RPM. Let's say in the low load area that we are happy with a 14.7 air fuel ratio, so we can click and drag over the desired cells, right click, select set value, and input 14.7. 
Now to address the problem of the factory ECU trying to maintain a lean AFR of 14.7 during periods of low boost, we can select the area of the map where boost starts to build and dial in a richer air fuel ratio. Here we'll go with 13 to 1. Next we'll go with an air fuel ratio of 12 and a half to 1. And then here we'll go with an air fuel ratio of 12.0 to 1. We can continue this upwards through the map for all load breakpoints. Now we need to compensate for these richer air fuel ratios by adjusting the fuel table. This next step is extremely important but often overlooked. By making the ECU's target air fuel ratio more rich, it will sense that the current condition is too lean and fuel trims will increase to make the actual air fuel ratio match the desired target ratio. Over time, short term fuel trim changes will influence the long term fuel trims and the changes we made in the O2 map will eventually be trimmed out. To prevent this from happening, you must go into the FIC's fuel table and add in fuel to compensate for the richer target air fuel ratios. During your previous testing, you found the short term fuel trims needed to satisfy the ECU's target air fuel ratio requirements. Use this trim information to adjust the fuel table where you've gone more rich. For an air fuel ratio of 13, we have a fuel trim of 20. Select the desired cells right click, set value, and then put 20 into the fuel map. For an air fuel ratio of 12 and a half to 1, we have a fuel trim of 26. And now for an air fuel ratio of 12.0 to 1, we have a fuel trim of 32. Continue this upwards through the map for all load breakpoints. Now that you've completed your O2 map, test your vehicle while monitoring your air fuel ratios and checking short term fuel trims. Remember, the objective is to keep short term fuel trims near zero. Adjust your fuel map accordingly to accomplish this.